win goes fireball it there comes the glorious char 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 you will be summoning it deja vu <laughs> Hello my friends of Middle Earth and welcome to the Beyond Sanity channel. my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for BFME 1 on the patch 2.2 it's a 2v2 match on the map East Mnet a map we have never seen on this channel before but this is about to be changed we have the red corner player Bank his ally top right is the orange Isengard player Matthews they are against the green Isengard player Giyuju and his ally at the bottom left is the white Rohan player Craig Kick so it's left against right we have Rohan Isengard versus Gondor Isengard. It's a very good matchup. I like this. Harry soldiers. Okay, the Gondor player is choosing to be defending this area, which is, I think, it's okay. You know, you don't want to lose this as Gondor because he has no barracks inside the castle. So if he loses this, it will be hard to recover. And this map has actually plenty of outposts, okay? So we have an outpost right in the middle. Capturing this later on will be actually very important. We have also an outpost here. And outpost actually that's it right yeah that's it we have plenty of creeps though we have troll creeps protecting this settlement over here we have a troll there in the middle of the map and there is also outpost in the middle okay the slaughterhouse will be destroyed demolishing it later on won't give you any money back and isengard is war chanted and ready to go i don't like this opening from isengard i think it's better to open with double furnace because if you lose your settlement against isengard which will for sure happen then you will kind of struggle Economy is very important in this game, especially at early stages of the game. So the workers, they are looking for a job. <laughs> they are going to the job center. Find me a job. I can cut woods very well. <laughs> and he will be also recovering this one. But Matthias is smart, you know. He want to repair this and delete this as much as he potentially can. Bang is pinging this, but you can't just run it down and get this creep. Trolls are the hardest creep in this game. So creeping this... It's not very easy and even heroes like eoma for example or theorin they can't one v one the troll when the troll is 100 percent hp this hobbit is hitting level two he has to micro around of course rohan is able to out spam gondor with the peasant spam as expected and gondor will be losing this his soldiers are actually badly damaged so his eco won't look that great but he has a stable and three farms inside the castle in one farm outside so he will get in total the 15 percent food bonus for the gondonites which is also very important because gondonites essentially cost 800 and you want to reduce the cost to the maximum amount as you can you know the hobbit can cloak here by the way and the gunner player won't be able to regain this control of the settlement anytime soon but he doesn't need to do this because rohan is legit winning the fight in the meantime the green isinger player is playing more defensively He's now sending a Uruk forward. This Isengard player going for the Uruk pit as well. But a bit too late. And Rohan has a full base, okay? Rohan has a full base into the Rohirrim warriors. When we talk about this matchup, I think it's a good matchup for either side. Rohan can provide easily leadership to Isengard combos. But again, leadership is not going to be that important in this matchup later on. Because both Isengards will eventually unlock their Freezing Ring, which is going to be the game-breaking point. Freezing Ring has been nerfed in the patch 2.22 version 3.2. The duration of it has been lowered by 20 seconds. So now it is still very strong, but the duration will be less active on the, on the game, which will open more rooms for strategies. Because earlier, you had like 3 minutes long, no leadership, which is a very long time in RTS games. And now it's still very strong, but it's only 2 minutes and 40 seconds. The Gondonites. This is so juicy. The trampling, in this, the trampling mechanic in PFME games is one of the beautiful, most beautiful mechanics actually added to the game. We have Theoden Kink on the field that will empower the Rohirrim. This way they will be way stronger than the Gondonites until they get upgrades. But if they long keep running... Oh, we don't want to do this. Okay, smart. Don't take a fight. You know you can't win. Horse number three. The stable level two. Also, this can also actually make your horses tankier versus enemy Rohirrim by 20%, okay? So again, upgrades are very important in Battle for Middle of One because the quality beats for sure the quantity in this game. We expanded to Uruk Pit. The Uruk Pit is now level two. 
This Uruk pit is only level 1, but it requires only one more Urukai to get to level 2. And then this Isengar player Mateus will also be able to recruit the Pikeman to counter the enemy Rohirrim. Eoma, the Horse Lord of Rohan. Spear throw them. Spear throw, one shots horses. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> and this way, you need to be patient, uh, you know, patient about it. It will take some time and eventually you will get to level 4 which unlocks an insane amount of damage leadership. It will give you 70% more damage. This is like the proof that Eomas leadership is actually kind of crucial for Rohan if you want to be strong with the horses in the mid to lead game. But it will say, take some time, you know? Here then is level 3 though. That's good. One more level to unlock the glorious charge. Lourdes has been creeping this one. He will get level 3 and it will make him to the deadliest hero counter. So maybe Eoma or Theorin, if Lourdes gets the chance to cripple them with the bow equipped, uh, you know, they can't survive this. That's not possible. Even with two heals, the carnage of Lourdes is just way too powerful. But I need to see that Gondor is putting a great amount of pressure and Rohan is more defending. But you can't defend this, you have no upgrades. Spear throw will one shot horses. And also, a smart move from this player putting Theory next to Eoma so he can share experience with his nephew, okay? And again, there is a troll creep still remaining on the field. This can be creeped by these two Rohan horses to get, you know, this dude to level 4 and also Theory to level 4. Two essential and big power spikes. And in this matchup, you don't want to go for combos or else with Rohan because your ally is Isengard. He will go for the infantry because that's the specialty of the Isengard faction. And you with Gondor on the one side and Rohan on the other side can definitely focus on getting more knights when you are Gondor and Rohirrim when you are Rohan. And making them as strong as you potentially can with the leadership. And then also from your ally you can get Warchant. Will be, you know, imagine this horse is with all upgrades, Glorious Charge, Eoma Leadership and Warchant rushing the Isengard piece. This player is not respecting this at all. He has not as many pikemen as he definitely should. But there comes Lourdes, the hero counter. Theodine will die. There is no chance. He'll will delay, but not gonna deny. Can Lourdes get away? I think he can, because the pikemen are coming to back up, and Rohan has to accept the death of their kingdom, and the king has been slain by one Uruk, while two Rohirrim and the nephew Eome were trying to defend them. That's the power of Lourdes. Rohan gets in the laser on the creep, we have also Farami on the field, actually a smart move, Farami is doing a great job against heroes too, like Emma, Theodin, they are like a low hero, a low armor heroes, and his warning arrow will chunk them, will burst them. So the combination of Lourdes, Cripple and warning arrow from Faramir might be frustrating to deal with for the Rohan player, and he needs his allies Lourdes. This player has to go for him. Even if he will be only level 1, he can still creep this one, get level 3. But it's about his presence, it's about his cripple. So the enemy heroes can't get away unpunished. I mean, what's, what can be done is that Gondor player can actually buy this outpost for his ally, build a statue in a well, so this player can go attack the green Isengard player, and if he takes too much damage, he can bail, get away, get to the outpost, and recover to full HP. So the combination of good and evil is actually busted, okay? So Gondor player has also Marketplace, you can see the animation. Marketplace is very strong in the patch 2.2 because you can demolish it after your upgrades in the 1.06 version of the game you had to keep your marketplace inside the castle and it was just not beneficial it was kind of slowish but now it's very strong you know especially in team games because team games tend to last longer in the marketplace the longer the game goes on the more you know crazy it's gonna be beautiful trample holy no pikeman but eoma is level three he's gonna cancel the spear throw and you see, that's why you don't want to combine units with each other. You want to actually have the pikemen separated. This player has even Lourdes leadership, which the green Isengard player doesn't. And the additional 60% DPS you get from Lourdes is definitely game-changing. Faramir though, Faramir! Oh, he's getting mounted? Oh, he's gonna be fine, right? Yeah, spear, but it won't kill him. Boom, he got bursted, but he's just fine. Okay, now... There is only one pikeman too, but the heroes can't approach as long as Lourdes is nearby. They will just die. Whoever gets close, 
will die. The only hero that can get crippled, I mean, there are multiple heroes, by the way, but of course, the more expensive heroes like Gimli, and also, of course, Aragorn with Anduri's sword. Gimli, I mean, Lourdes can cripple him too, but he can't go in melee range when Aragorn has Anduri's sword, he will melt you. But beautiful beast rush happening. Lourdes! Deja vu! I mean, this theory, I, I, something tells me that this Theorian King will get killed by Lourdes multiple times. Multiple times this game. Chains! Theorian got crippled for the third time. I told you guys. I told you, boys. But he had to do this. Maybe he didn't have. But good micro from Rohan. Now keep focusing down the buildings. That's what you want to do. He has no horseman shields. That would, you know, increase his endurance and durability against arrows. He will be using heal. Gizhi is pinging and saying, "Come, I'm coming to you." But his army is badly damaged, and I don't think this is going to be effective. Gondor, in the meantime, focusing more on map control. He has also the shields upgrade now, that again will make them also tankier versus enemy Rohirrim. But most importantly, versus enemy combos from Isengard and the Sentry Towers, they will deal way less damage now to the horses of Gondor. Rohan has to capture this one, but are they powerful enough to keep the outpost after capturing? That's the big question. Now the counter rush. He has two pikemen, he needs to micro them ASAP. In this situation, what you want to do when you play Isengard, you want to manually select every single tower and focus down Faramir. Faramir is actually not that tanky, unlike the horses, and he will have to disengage. Does he have Lourdes? Yeah, he finally has Lourdes, and it looks like he's heating up to this troll creep, which is, I believe, one of the last remaining creeps on this map. Yes, sir. And the Isengard player is preparing, he has two combos, one pikeman, he needs more combos, he has third combo in the base. I don't think his eco is looking that good, let me take a look into this. Uh, he has actually good eco, I mean, at, at this point of the game, you want to make more combos or find a transition into Saruman. Saruman can be also very good for even more leadership. This army has now 110% more damage and 100% more armor, because Faramir is still on level 3, but I think the Warchan was not needed. With Warchan, you want to be a bit more patient. You don't want to use it when there is no fight that will break out, okay? I mean, at this point, they can just give up the outpost. There is nothing to gain for you. And you just wasted a huge cooldown of 2 minutes and 30 seconds, or 15 seconds rather, and which you could, which you didn't have to do. Okay, Rohan has, again, Theoden back in the business. You know, <laughs> this guy is like, I don't know. <laughs> Who get killed and returned multiple times? Maybe Gandalf in the films, right? But he got only killed once. Yoma getting level 4. Massive power spike for Rohan. Massive. This way... I mean, when Elma and Theoden are nearby, Gondor without Gandalf cannot win the skirmishes anymore. Rohirrim against Gondorites, Rohirrim will smash. This 70% more damage is crazy strong. He's looking for a chains. Theoden got crippled for the third time. I told you guys. I told you boys. But he had to do this. Maybe he didn't have to do this. Theoden got killed. Paramir is getting also crippled. At this point, it would be a much better choice to cripple this Lord because he's much more rewarding for the enemy team than Farami is. But, you know, Farami got killed. Lords didn't get experience for this. He's still level 3. Getting level 5 is going to be very big. What Rohan can do is revive Theorin and forget about him. Put him just to the, to the allies' combos. So they receive more armor and more DPS when Theorin is nearby. And this way, the Green Isinger player should be able to win the fights against the Red Isinger player. But he has enough money now for Saruman. The White Wizard will be joining the battlefield very, very soon. This settlement will be finally captured by Isengard. He could be, you know, controlling this way longer. But it's fine. It is not over until it's over. From mistakes we learn, from learning we evolve, from evolving we become, we become beasts, and from becoming beasts we win those games. And one of the mistakes is to make this pikeman crossbowman combo. They're actually very weak against Uruk crossbowman combo. It's better to make the normal combos with Uruks and crossbowman and put some pikeman and porcupine formation between them because they can use their combos, I mean, the, the porcupine damage way more better. And in addition to that, your combos will not get out damaged by the enemy combos. Just a quick tip. He's recovering. We have the white wizard. It has to be good for something. Mifradia has been recruited, and something tells me Fiesta is about to happen. Because we have two wizards on the one side, and no wizard on the other side. 
this player is actually not even close i believe yeah he needs still 2000 for his own Saruman. and the two wizards you know it i know it he she it knows it can turn the game around and even boromir has been recruited paramir will get revived for 900 only and he's level four by the way so a half a level look at this half a level and also his leadership will be unlocked so now we will see the full potential of rohan isengard versus gondor isengard if and when rohan will recruit his aragorn araton's son for even greater leadership for his ally but also his ally needs you know lords i mean saruman there are no siege weapons included yet in this game gonna play might go for the workshop to recruit some trebuchet trebuchet hard countering mobile units like the pikeman crossbowman come from isengard and can fish power points for you like crazy i mean the outpost will be given up but you can see the units are glowing shining bright like a diamond okay it's all from the leadership of lords saruman and gandalf i mean without warchan even they are dealing so much damage and they are so tanky it will be quite difficult for Rohan Isengard to defend this. Lords only level 3, no Saruman, no, Ar no Saruman yet though. Yes, Saruman coming, fireball! Whose land is this? Giyu has actually been covering the land from Mateusz, I believe. But Gondor has also land. Lords will get crippled. Glorious charge, the pikeman in the pork fight formation! Elvin Wood, fireball! Nice micro from Rohan! easter light but Gandalf is uncrippled because he crippled the lords from Mateusz Gandalf can do whatever he wants this is his moment he could have killed the allies lords by the way but it looks like he will be fine anyway oh my goodness what a big w for Gondor Isengard super late Elvin Wood from Krakik he should be using it way before there is no need to pick Andurib if you have not Aragorn on the field yet. And with the Alvin Wood, when the trample was happening, when the, when the engage was happening, if they would place the Alvin Wood, the Rohirrim trample, the charge of Rohirrim would smash all the Uruks. But why they are retreating? There is no need. I think at this point, it would just be better to move on. You can send Lords back a little bit to recover, but your high level combos. There is nothing in the side, in the base of the Green Isengard player, besides Saruman, who was just using his fireball. It looks like Gondor will disengage as well, because Lords has been killed from this player, but this player's Lords is still remaining, and so is his Saruman. Only Faramir which is, I believe, okay for Denethor, was getting killed during the battle. Level 6 Gondor Knights. Good looking map control for Gondor, marketplace, level 3 steeple, all upgrades on the horses. And because it's a friendly game, they don't even tend to recruit and build up those mighty siege weapons like Ballista from Isengard and Trebuchet from Gondor. Aragorn has been recruited. Can the king of Gondor somehow do anything about this situation because he's the potentially the tankiest hero in the game with the combination of Andri sword and the blade master he can withstand Balrog that's how powerful the LSR in this game is but there is a huge army and a dude that can pin you down so if you can't move, you will eventually die. Fireball, fireball. Ganef is coming, boys. There is Lord's at Cripple him. You see that is next to him. Oh my goodness. Don't tell me you didn't see it. There comes the glorious charge, 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 charge. Holy guacamole. Everything has been demolished. That's the power of the glorious charge ladies and gentlemen you see that you do see this i mean the combination was amazing because giyu this is the green isinger player was using rain so all the leadership from the red isinger player was negated and no leadership against horses with glorious charge running you down you will get smashed so that's faramir i mean boromir Thunder is going for a beautiful fireball Oh my goodness. This dude, I don't know who he crippled, but I can tell you he didn't cripple the target he should be crippling. And this, of course, is the White, White Rider Ganov. 
I mean, only the Saruman, I believe, got killed. Yep. And Lourdes is still remaining on the field. That's your time to shine. That's your time to move on. Go, 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 go. Take down the outpost ASAP. Still no workshop. Saruman will get revived. You know, I believe this Isengard player... Let me take a look into this. Yeah, he has more than enough money to actually demolish one of the buildings and go for the second Uruk put. In late game, it's all about the spam, okay? So you want to spam. You want to get units on the field ASAP. Your money, when you don't use it, it's meaningless, right? So go for the second Uruk pit when you play Isengard. And go for the second a stable when you are Gondor. But he's going for the workshop that works even better. You know, trebuchet are smashing. They are smashing everything. Level 7 Aragorn, though. This dude is also level 7 almost. Level 8 will unlock the Villa of Saruman. And this Gandalf is almost level 8. And this was level uh, a level 6 wizard. Theory in level 4, you're on level 8. So, dude, I'm telling you one thing. This Rohan can't really get any stronger. But you know what the mistake is? They win a fight. I'm talking, by the way, about both the teams. They win a fight, but they don't commit on it. Look, it's all about buying momentum with your move. So, you want to fight, then you move on and make stuff done, get stuff done. Deal economical damage, get map control, take down the outposts. But the winning fight is meaningless if you sit and wait for the next fight because your opponent can recover from this and that's the point of the game you don't give them the chance to recover okay but it's better for us because we will see another big clash this army is glowing hard Mateusz has freezing rain his opponent doesn't there comes the palantir more chance did he use the freezing rain yes he used the freezing rain but the alvin wood i mean that's a miscommunication right there saruman is getting focused he's getting chunked actually holy there is another saruman aragon is in between the army saruman is running away blasted throw him into the next mansion we see cloud break i don't know what's going on it's it's a complete cloud fiesta cloud break from rohan that stuns the units by the way level two Lourdes level 7. Look, Aragorn! Aragorn! Aragorn is killing Saruman in the background! And he's gonna kill Lords, Lords, Lords! Oh Lords! Oh my goodness! Arag Did you see power of Aragorn? Oh my goodness! In the meantime, this guy was blasting all the all the horses too! And he is leveling up the units. And I don't know how, but the Isengard Rohan team won the fight. What a absolute mess he's gonna use the villa of saruman to get some hp on his saruman and lutz of course and now they can keep moving but the problem here is they fell well so the isengard player can recover insanely fast and now they've even trebuchet one of them is there and more of them will make it to this spot it will be very hard for isengard to commit to this area without feeding too many power points to gondor so what rohan can do is to go around this and go for the main castle instead he has insanely highly leveled Rohirrim with full upgrades and he has Glorious Charge plus Eomer Leadership. The amount of damage he can deal to the base of Isengard is crazy. I mean, he can literally burst it down. We are here to protect our land. Okay, so for the next big fight, it looks like Giju, that's the green Isengard player, will have his freezing green, but Mateusz, the orange Isengard player, won't have it, okay? It's very important to keep in mind. Three trebuchet, one more, and the siege works hitting level two. Fire zone upgrading coming. Oof, 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 oof. It's gonna be a trebuchet army, boys. One, two, three, four, five. But the end smooth. Okay, I like that one. Blast them, Gandalf. Boom. Where is the cripple? Where this guy, look, you want to be on an autopilot, okay? The second you see Gandalf with Lourdes, you click on Lourdes, you press C, that's the shortcut for the cripple, and you right click on the Gandalf. That's your mission. You don't need to be, actually, my bad, that's the Lourdes from Matthews. What am I talking about? This Lourdes is over here, so ignore what I just said. Okay, I think the ends won't do anything. <laughs> oh, the damage is crazy! Oh, 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 get off, get off, get off, get off, get off, get off. Does he have Rohir marches? He does. Can they break one part of the wall? I don't know. I don't know. They can. They can't. They can. 
Okay, but I think Gondor is rich to repair this, right? Yeah, Gondor is over 9,000. In the meantime, we have a fight over here. Lord got crippled, Saruman got crippled. We love Saruman, it's on cooldown, he can't use it. They are, that's a high ground, by the way. They need to move a little bit closer. The map is not flat. Here is going to be used from Gondor to save his ally. Fireball, he is tunnel vision focused on Saruman. He is trying his best to kill Saruman, but Rohan is coming now. The trebuchet are unprotected. They will feed so many power points to Rohan. But Gondor is also almost AOD as he tramples down the remaining army of Isengard. Gandalf is level almost 9. Um, and 10 power points for Gondor collected after the break. You know what that means. That's the army of the dead being available. He just needs to unlock it from his spellbook as Boromir goes down. Aragorn is almost level 9 as well. The Rohirrim army is so powerful that I believe the only thing that can kill them is the AOD. But keep in mind that AOD can't outrun Rohirrim. So if Rohan player reacts fast enough, he can get away and AOD would be completely wasted. Level almost 9. This guy is also level 6, Farami by the way. And Rohan has also almost AOD. He needs half a power point. He has Cowplay available for the next big fight. Mateusz has 13 power points in the bank. He's gonna get to Balrog very soon. And the last player we are talking about is the Green Isinger player Giju. He has almost 15 power points collected. He's only 5 power points, even closer to the Balrog than Mateusz is. But that's a big army. Imagine AOD from Rohan right here on the spot. That would be crazy. But Gondor it is instead who has the AOD unlocked. And now we see a big army of Isengard. But you know, I know, the army will get one-shotted. Maybe Aragorn can kill a few of them. And he's level 9 by the way. I mean, guys, if you don't know, there are a few heroes that can actually kill AOD. And Aragorn is one of them. Blade Master Anduril. You one shot them. Oof. I mean, I know what's gonna happen in the next fight. Or do I? I don't know, man. Also, Rohan is almost EOD, you know? So, I wanna see this. Hold on a second. Let me take a look into the power point. So, Mateusz has the freezing green. His ally, his opponent, the green Isengard player, doesn't. So, the glorious charge won't be that effective. But the Rohirrim here are very strong. Level 10 Rohirrim Archer. You know how, hit, how, they, how hard they will hit. It would be unbelievable. Aragorn needs to be careful. The statue is getting bursted down. He doesn't demolish it in time. Rohan Isengard is getting experience for this. Lords, we see Cloudbreak from Gondor. They are stunned. They are stunned, but when Saruman is nearby, they will be go they will be good to go again. He crippled Lords for absolutely no reason. There comes the AOD. Rohan is disengaging, I think, but I think Rohan also lost everything, dude. He was running, I believe he was running into the AOD. He only saved one level 10 or two level 10 rohirrim but all these rohirrim artists are goners oh boy in the meantime of course lord was able to survive from isengard it's good and rohan has to make a new army but it's it shouldn't be rohirrim archers you don't need this what you need are normal rohirrim that's what you need because you need to trample i mean i, I know the reason why he's going for the rohirrim archers because they are great against Gandalf. But I think your majority, the majority of your army, should still be the normal Rohirrim warriors. Now it's the time of Isengard Gondor to push. It's a huge army of Gondor knights with Faramir leadership and Ganaf leadership. They are taking almost zero damage from the arrows from the towers. Because the, this gives them extra armor, this gives them only armor against arrows, and then Ganaf and Faramir gives them over a hundred percent more armor leadership. So these horses will become nearly immune <laughs> to any kind of damage, especially from the sanity towers. All right, Rohan is the Cowbreak available though. Can this do something? It's powerful, it will reduce, oof, what a beautiful fireball. And he again crippled Lourdes. Again, Ganov can do whatever he wants. He's gonna use the Warm Tongue, but it won't do anything. Ganov can go for a blast. He's going for the, uh, for the, for the Eagles. Hard focusing now on the Saruman who's using the Will of Saruman. He's gonna fireball. He should be fireballing the Eagle instead. He will disobedible for Rohan and he will use it immediately. Palantir as a reaction to this to get movement speed on his heroes. But I think the AOD can still catch up to you. AOD is faster than any infantry hero or unit on foot and he will be able to run you down. Aragorn unfortunately he couldn't get any experience from this. Uh, Rohir Martis are killing those Eagles like crazy. And did he lose any hero? No, he didn't lose any hero. He never recruited 
uh, Legolas 2, which he should, by the way. Look, guys, what I'm trying to say is like this Rohan player has over 16,000 in his bank, and there is absolutely no reason why he shouldn't recruit Eowyn, Gimli, Legolas. You know, just put them next to your allies' combos, and Legolas, especially, if he gets some levels, there are three major heroes on the opposite side of the map. There is a Lords you need to deal with, there is a Saruman, and there is a Gandalf. And a Legolas with level 5, 6, 7 can burst them so hard, you know? And Gimli, of course, too. Slayer, you run down loot. Slayer, you run down Saruman. Slayer, you can leap on them. There comes the end special summon. They are fully committing. And there comes the Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. Mateus was also his Balrog. Will he use it defensively, though? Boromir got crippled just like in the films. Balrog is flying inside the castle of Isengard. And the Balrog from Matthews is still available, where he will be using it. That's a very, very important question. The Balrog in the meantime taking care of the castle. He has the Breath Fire available. He's going to destroy the Uruk Pit, but one Breath Fire... I mean, he didn't ignite. You need ignite to deal more damage. Then you can one-shot the furnaces, but you can't still one-shot the Uruk Pit. You need an uh, auto attack. Uruk Pit level 3 is gone. In the meantime, dude... But the Rohirrim with the Glorious Charge were able to survive. Now Rohan has to run, 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 run. Okay. This Balrog's time is gone. The Balrog here can keep flying, 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 flying. He can do this maybe. I, mean, I don't know. I think he can destroy the Citadel and maybe the Uruk Pits. The, the... Oh, okay. He's gonna go for the Breath Fire here. Not the best. But killing front to back, it's better than nothing. The reason why you always go for the main Citadel is because if you destroy this, he can't rebuild. Oh my goodness, Saruman come back alive. Oh, okay. Dude, I'm losing my voice. Aragorn, look Aragorn, guys. Oh, there comes the Warchan on, on the horses. Now they are very strong. Farami leadership too. Here you should try to kill Farami who was next to you. The horses with Farami and Warchan are too tanky, and Aragorn was out of no reason far away. Okay, now every major ability and uh, summon is on cooldown besides the AOD from the Gun of Player Bank. Remember, he was the first one who got who got to use it, so his AOD will be available soon. And in the late game, it's all about time, okay? So you need to get stuff done. You need to play around the cooldowns of your opponent's summons. Like Balrog, EOD, and so on. So, has only one Uruk Pit, but it's level 1. The production speed is going to be very low, so the Isengard player, Gishu, should be able to outspam. There comes Cl Cl Cloudbreak. Palantir has been used to get fear resistance on the units. There comes the Grey Company. Gondor has the best summons by far in the lead scheme, and the Trample without the Glorious Charge was a big mistake. Where was the Theorin when we need him? Did he lose Theorin? No, he didn't lose Theorin. And Glorious Charge was even available. But he barely was able to survive. Remember, he is on cooldown for Gondor and he is on cooldown for Rohan too. So one shot on Theorin, he will die. And with high levels, the, re the revive time is going to be extremely long. He's level 7. So if he dies over here, it will take you 2 minutes to get him back in the business. Which is again a long time. And every time you make a mistake like this, your opponent will have a free time to get to wait for the next ultimate special summon in this case we are talking about banks eod and the Balrog from Mateusz. here in refusing to use glorious charge just use it and get away you don't need to be close he's gonna use it now i believe a king dies with glorious charge available. Okay, so the one tongue only hit one horse. It's a good touch from Rohan. And Gandalf is missing the Wizard Plus. Fireball will only hit one horse. So it's a good... I mean, they, he took like three abilities from the Wizards and lost almost nothing. The the, 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 thing, the thing with Theodin kind of hurts, you know? It kind of hurts. It's a big mistake you should not make. I mean, he's chilling over here, by the way. Just send those units inside the castle of your ally to recover. Alright, so, you know, Bank has now EOD, and it's also his Eagles available. The Outpost will be given up. Huge army, huge army. Level 8. I want to say get up level 10. 
Oh, what is this level? Level 9. It needs a whole level still, but it's doable. Okay, you need only one level. Then we get to see the Word of Power. By the way, Word of Power, hard countering AOD special summon as well. Because if you are close to the AOD summon from your opponent, Rohan player, and you insta use your Word of Power, you can insta kill them. You can insta kill every battalion of AOD before they can deal any damage, which is huge, by the way. So, of course, countering this will give you a huge advantage, a massive one. The siege will begin. Three trebuchet, two combos with Lourdes, Saruman, Paramir, level 9, Yanav, level 9, Boromir. I was also recruited, actually. Where is Boromir at? Where is Boromir? Protect. He's also level 7. He needs to be close to this combo still for additional damage. There comes the Rohirrim special summon from the Gondor player. Again, Gondor has the best summons in the lead game. That's what makes Gondor so threatening and so dangerous to play against. Aragorn got crippled, he can't move, but he's still tanky, he needs a quarter for his own AOD, and Aragorn's AOD is so good versus Isengard too. He's gonna go for a Easter Elad, I believe, but you don't want to come close to this dude. With Anduril and Platemaster, he is going to melt you. Okay, so they are going for this outpost, beautiful, beautiful uh, blast from Saruman. AOD will be used from the Rohan player. Okay. So Gondor is keeping it for now. And AOD will kill everything, including Saruman. He can't survive. Maybe Lourdes can get away. And there comes the AOD on the Rohirrim. Insta bursting. We hear Boromir screaming. I will fight for the end. But nobody was trying to kill me in the first place. <laughs> but he's gonna go down. Lourdes got killed. And this player. Oh, Aragorn. Oh, 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 hold on. Look, look, guys. Kill him. He healed him. Okay, I mean, the EOD from Gondor was actually awful. Holy, what a wasted EOD. He could have just sent one battalion downside to kill this army from Isengard, but he didn't. So the army, the EOD summon from Rohan was way better in every aspect. He killed both the heroes, he killed all the army. It was much better. Did Kenov die actually? Yeah, the answer is yes, he died actually. And Rohan didn't lose any hero. Besides Mary, he never revived him, but he could. He has, uh, Gondor has 8000. He has also one steeple only. And Balrog from Mateus is available almost, and the Balrog from this player will also be available very soon. So now the question is, what is the best way of using it? That's going to be the big question. Uh oh, uh, heal him. Bit of Saruman, nice. He healed him. You can't control eagles, by the way. That's not possible. Kill the eagle. Oh my goodness, nobody's attacking the eagle. Too late. And Saruman died for no reason. Okay, so it's fine now. Okay, I mean, you could have saved him. It's a it's a very important hero. A revive time from Saruman when he's level 9 will take you 3 minutes. It's a very long time. Trampoline coming. Balrog of Morgoth. Oof. It's hot. It's getting hot in here. Okay. Okay. But it's other Balrog. He's he's holding it. I don't know if holding it is a Oh Gondor is going inside the keys, inside the castle. That's a gate trash in my book because the gate is still not destroyed. Oof, 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 oof. Okay. But Rohan is still an outpost. Actually two outposts, so he won't be defeated. Does he have money? Uh, yeah, of course, dude. He has like 26,000. He has more than enough money. He can rebuy the castle a few times, but the castle has been destroyed. The problem with rebuying the castle, yeah, you can rebuy it, but the problem is. Ooh. Oh, Aragorn is e level 10. He has EOD too. What? I mean, what is throw here? Someone gonna do? Fight EOD? <laughs> Dude, that's good. Because, I mean, getting Ganoff level 10 is a very hard task. But getting Aragorn to level 10 is even harder. As a melee hero who can't get mounted, it's very difficult. But smart move from Gondor. You see he's ranting around Rosie, trying to stall. 
and now he can buy this castle dude if he can buy this castle it's gonna be big by the way that's gonna be massive by the way this chunk that's his heal his heal oh he's face tanking but you see how tanky he is he's so low tank the easter light and the lightning sword and he's still full hp by the way and he would not even need to use the heal if he would use the bleed mask in the first place but rohan of course because of aragorn is able to win the fight and he has now been successfully able to reclaim his castle it's a reset because every structure he's building up now will be only level one a stable will lose 50 percent of its production speed a farm will be level one give you way less money so in the meantime we see balrog i think the aod summon from rohan was better than the aod summon from gondor but the aod summon from uh, the balrog summon from Mateus was better than the balrog summon from the opponent player beautiful that comes to cripple oh my he's going ham no he has no heal remember he used heal on aragorn plus 200 in the bank for killing yoma Boromir is level 7, by the way. Holy moly. And it's gonna take you also <laughs> like 2 minutes 30 seconds. It's a long time, too. He's using the For Gondor. He wanted to use it. He used the, you know, the Horn of Gondor. Aragorn is as fast as Boromir, so Boromir can get away, no problemo. But he can't get away from the Rohirrim. Rohirrim will be chunking him, actually. Good micro from Gondor. He pressing the S button. Nice shot from the Trebuchet. It doesn't you know deal too much damage to the horses but it knocks them down on the ground that's also massively important and uh, balrog was able to destroy the orphan but it's building up rising from the from the ground because a new power might be rising and the victory will be attained for any team it might happen i don't know this game is actually quite open yet um it's hard to tell which team is going to be the winner of this 2v2 game but we are about to find out together The problem is, um, the, look, imagine we nerfed the AOD and Balrog multiple times, okay? We nerfed it. They used to have 6 minutes cooldowns only. We increased the cooldowns by almost 50% from the original BFME1. But yet you see how decisive they are and how in a dilemma you are in the late, late game. And it's all evolving around the ultimate summons. The idea behind this nerf of the cooldown was to see what would happen if there is a there is longer cooldown between the ultimate summon so you summon eod but there is a cooldown before the second before you will be able to summon the eod for the second time and during this cooldown during this time window your opponent has the chance to punish you for it but the punishment just didn't really happen in this game they used eod but then they just waited and didn't go for a big push no feeding is a problem anymore you see you see now you see aod has been used now you know you have eight minutes time and this time you need to use wisely to get stuff done oh lords will be able to survive aod is chasing down saruman he's gonna use the of saruman blast them actually just blast them he will be using devastation ah actually the aod is not microing very well and the wizard will be able to survive nice to the <laughs> thanks to the uh, you know the buff we gave to the wizard of isengard with the will of saruman outpost for Matthews. army building up again from the uruk level 3 saruman will get revived this player didn't lose any hero um he has double uruk pit so he should be able to make an army very soon and then you want to move on because Matthews has balrog also very uh, soon available again okay so they both use EOD by the way they both use it Aragorn is level 10 he has another EOD when that's you see when a hero like Aragorn is level 10 who's a very tanky hero at the first place you see how deadly this is going to be okay that's I summon you to fulfill your oath I'd say you and he just one shot his army just like that Lords got crip, uh, got chunked and cripple is on cooldown maybe this can don't cripple him there is a gun if you need to cripple he has army in the base of his ally they are rotating now 
this kind of is almost level 10 he needs a quarter of experience that comes to great company the the fireball will destroy one of the trebuchet knock down the lords that comes through hit him summon big commitment balrog is almost available for both the isengard players but it's gonna be available sooner for Mateusz. he will be summoning it on top of the enemy army and he will fly to defend himself but again rohirrim are mobile enough to disengage to dodge does he have rohirrim arches the answer is yes they should instantly kill those eagles before they kill any of the heroes they will knock down this Eoma, who is one hit away from getting completely destroyed. Eoma, the Horse Lord, won't make it out alive. The Balrog has not much time left, but he has time left enough to go for one more breath fire. Just destroy the outpost. The Eagle, you see, they have to react to the Balrog because if they stop to kill the Eagle, Balrog will fly on you and you are doomed. He's gonna use Breath Fire. Nice Breath Fire. Good micro from Mateusz using the last possible second to catch the LSR. That's a level 10 Aragorn. Reviving him. Three minutes. Three minutes. Now we will be waiting for the next rotation of the Balrog, but this time from the Green Isengard player. There is an army coming, and in a dream world, you want to use your Balrog offensively and not defensively. But the good thing about Balrog is you can use it defensively and you can fly, but, you know, again, in a dream world, every second matters, and you summoning him right here will cause a much higher amount of devastation in the enemy castle then you summoning it here but you need to use wings two times that's 14 seconds which you sacrifice from the duration of your balrog which doesn't last that long you know balrog is only available active for a minute outpost will be destroyed rohan has lost all his heroes this time theodin has been killed ilma has been killed aragorn has been killed and it's also this ganov it's a matter of time. He will get to level 10 in this game. And this is going to be at least as devastating as the EOD special summon from Aragorn. Okay, so huge Isengard army from Matthäus with Saruman being level 9. And this Saruman is almost back. Lourdes has been just revived. And Balrog is basically available. Deja vu. <laughs> Vince. Oh, he will use the Vir of Saruman, but Sar Oh, okay, not the best breath fire. He's always getting behind you, by the way. Maybe he can get away. Just hit him. Two Maya standing next to each other. But only one of them can be the winner. <laughs> know your place, Saruman. No your place son <laughs> oh by the way this army is huge EOD is still on cooldown so maybe Rohan can get stuff done here it's time for Rohan to shine this army use it there comes the glorious charge but Isengard is smart he's immediately making more army doesn't hesitate doesn't waste time even trebuchet for the defense inside the castle Oh boy, there comes Gandalf level 10. He farmed it. He waited for it. Dude, Palantir him. Use Cloud Break. Slow, slow them down. Aragorn is back. <laughs> He's gonna summon his own AOD. But this guy can use water power. I mean, I, I'm sorry, my friend, but that's the worst without water power I've ever seen. You killed laughing. <laughs> the outer circle. <laughs> you can cancel it, by the way. The outer circle. When when you are when you get up is here and you affect this area. The closest target was here from the enemy, so they just could get pushed back, but they don't die. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's gonna be a big big push because the cool. But EOD is almost available again. There comes Cloud Break from Gondor to stun the units and to slow them. And special summon Cloud Break from Rohan has been used. There comes the Lightning Sword. The War of Power has been unfortunately completely wasted. Lourdes got crippled. Eoma is doing nothing. Boromir is actually doing a good job knocking down the heroes and the units on the ground. And a huge Gondor army is, 
Yeah, Gondor is, um, is coming with Warchant. Eagle, uh, I mean, the Ains destroyed the Orphank. There comes the Cripple. Fireball will be used on the Gondor Knights. Beautiful. Fireball always chunks, by the way. And there comes the EOD, something from Gondor for, for the defense, okay? So he's gonna de defend his allies' beast. But that's actually a big achievement for, um, in my book, for the Gondor Rohan Isengard team. Because they managed to destroy the Orphan from Isengard, okay? And this will mean that he needs to rebuild it and again keep reviving his heroes that will make him lose another three minutes in total. And in addition to that, Gondor used the AOD, but Rohan was able to save it. And again, we are talking about a cooldown window. We know Matthias will have Baldrog available soon again, but before this happens, you have the chance for the next minute to do amazing with the Rohan army. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Is Aragorn good killed again? Looks like we got some more labor scum. Okay. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Oh my goodness, eagles again, really? Oh nice, EOD blasted! You need to kill the eagles. But if the eagles attack when AOD is nearby, like they do do right now, then also AOD will kill them. Okay? Destroy the trebuchet too. Amazing. Kill the remaining pikemen. Look, he has no money. Isengard is poor, but he has Balrog. He can't even afford to revive his Saruman, by the way. That's how poor he is. So even if he can destroy some of the buildings, level 3 furnaces, it will also deal a, month, a great amount of damage. And Mateusz will be forced to use the Balrog defensively. But once the enemy units are inside the castle, you can't use it inside the castles, the Balrog. There's a limitation to Balrog, which isn't to AOD. AOD can be used anywhere. He's gonna summon the Balrog here to crush the Isengard army that was about to come to the castle of Mateusz, but the army of Rohan is still doing their thing. If they can destroy the Orphank, that again will mean so much. Gandalf is getting chunked. Nice dodge by Rohan. Beautiful dodge. The Zaplas has been absolutely wasted. The Balrog is trying to make it to the Isengard castle, but even if it does, the amount of damage he will be able to deal is not going to be that great. He was able to buy the castle here, Maybe you can use wings on Theoden King. I mean, the, the, the seat. Yeah. Pew! Come here, old man. He's gonna miss Theoden. <laughs> but he's, he will be able to destroy the outpost. It's good. Balrog will be gone again now. He has no more time left. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Because look at the money from Isengard. He's extremely poor. He has actually, look, the Lambir Mills, they are not very good in the late, late game. This game is going on for a really long time, by the way. What is this? Like an hour game so far? And they are harvesting since 50 minutes, those trees. Eventually, they will, of course, be gone, right? Ganoff level 10. Maybe he can find his redemption with the second Word of Power attempt. The first one was absolutely bad, by the way. There is no excuse to that one. Okay, so Balrog from Giju will be available for the next time. But I believe this time, for the first time maybe, we'll be able to use it offensively for push. That's how that's how you can get the best out of your summon. You summon it offensively, and then you have a army coming to finish the job what Balrog started. The job's name is destroy the evil forces in this game. Cloudbreak will stun them. Rohirrim summon, that's good. But Rohan is sending all the Rohirrim. This is like a Mina City situation, by the way. Holy moly. Right now, right for Ruin and the world's ending. Oh boy. Okay, I don't see you can defend this. Where is Gandalf at? Gandalf is so far away. You need to be there to use the water power, man. Come on now, dude. He's gonna summon the EOD from Balrog. Oh, talking about Balrog! No, what is this game? Okay. But the horses, they had so much leadership. They didn't die. They got low, but they didn't die. There is Gennaf it. There is Gennaf it. Okay, Gennaf is here. Kill the Balrog, maybe. I don't know. He's one shot in the trebuchet. That's how powerful Aragorn is with level 10. Dude, uh, don't be misleaded by the 232 damage, by the way. This boost is by 50%. 
and Anduril is making it another 100 person more damage so he basically deals numbers you know damage in numbers out of your mind but the beast will fall if he can use the wings uh, the, the uh, he doesn't want to use the blight or uh, not the blight the whip on faramir yeah at this point if i would just risk it i would just use my lightning sword on, on balrog because i know if my ally loses i will lose too and that's what happened mateus has been defeated fireball saddam you can touch this did it did it did it faramir is used to the fire bang will leave the game and that's gonna be it boys gg well played to the rohan isengard team what a massive fiesta back and forth i hope you enjoyed this if you did you know what to do leave a like to this video and also comment down below what of the moves has been your most favorite in the scheme and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss the future uploads on this channel i will see i will see you all next in the next video i can't even talk until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys